this morning, I am really excited to read to you two books um, that I haven't read. So we'll learn about them together. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Let me just tell you who I am. I am Dr. Patterson, Dr. Edith Patterson. I'm a delegate in the Maryland General Assembly. Now, you probably have no idea what the Maryland General Assembly is, but your parents do. And I used to work here for a very, very long time, and I still love the College of Southern Maryland very much. In the General Assembly, what we do is make laws that affect you, make good laws that help you so that when you grow up, you will be the next college president, or you will be a teacher, or you will be an astronaut, or president, governor, or whatever it is you want to do. Your world is so vast. Okay, so is it okay if I start reading? Yes. Okay, and you know what? I'm not just going to read, I'm going to ask questions because your teacher said that teachers and directors said that you all are the smartest third and four, three and four year olds in the state of Maryland. Is that true? All right, we're going to see, because I think you're pretty smart as well, and you have very, very good teachers who teach you a lot. All right, the first book, is it okay if I read this one? Yes. It's The Last Stop on Market Street. So what do you think they're, looking at this, what do you think they're getting ready to do? They're getting on the bus. They're getting on the bus. You're very smart. Okay. And who do you think this lady is? Uh, what did you say? Her grandma. Her grandma. That's well. You probably figured out because she has what? Red hair. hair. Okay. Well, I'm a grandma too. I have. Two. <laughs> I have white hair. I think that's great. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Now remember, I'm going to ask you questions, okay? But you only raise your hand. Got it? Raise your hand when you have an answer. But we're moving on. So this is Grandma, and she's with her grandchild, okay? All right. All right, it says, CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps, this is a church. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled, freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. So what is the little boy's name? CJ. Very good. CJ is his name. And where was he coming from? From the house. From church. He's coming from church. Very good. Smart. Okay. I can see. Yes, you can. Can you see that? Right up front. Okay. I can't see. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella. Now, do you have someone you call Nana? I don't. Okay. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we got to wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you use that big, um, that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. Okay. He's complaining because it's raining and he's getting wet, right? All right. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on the flower petals, watch rain splatter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend Kobe climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't got a car? Okay, his friend has a car, right? 
but they don't. Okay, so if you don't have a car, you have to wait for a bus. A bus. Very smart. I have a car and a bus. Well, good and for I you. Okay. Okay. The bus, I'm sorry. Boy, what we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire and old Mr. Dennis who also always has a trick for you. So the bus driver's name is Mr. Dennis and he does tricks. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and sagged and the door swung open. So is this a new bus, an old bus? Old bus. Old bus. Smart again. It's an old bus because it creaked and it sagged and it made noise, it's old bus. Okay, what's that I see, Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coin from behind T.J.'s ear because he played a trick and placed it in his palm. Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed C.J. along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was turning, uh, tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good, good afternoon. She made sure CJ did the same. Okay. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Lurched forward and stopped. So it went like up, stop, up, stop. Nana hummed as she knit. How come we always got to go here after church, CJ said. Miguel and Kobe never have to go nowhere. I feel sorry for those boys, she told them. They'll never get a chance to meet uh, Bobo or the sun sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ uh, stared out the window feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side. He watched a group of boys hop curves on bikes. So did CJ like being on the bus? No, because he wanted to do other things, right? Good. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing, Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. In other words, instead of seeing, they do what? Hearing. They listen, right, they use their hearing. That's a fact. Their nose is too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. Because she's very nice, right? Okay, two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why don't you ask the man if he'll play us a song? What were the boys wearing? Uh, Earbuds? Earbuds. Okay. So, CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. Can you believe the dog listened to the music as well? So he, they closed their eyes so they could do what? Hear the music better. Okay? And in the darkness, the rhythm lifts CJ out of the bus, out of the busy city. He saw sunlight, sunset colors swirling over crashing waves. Saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky. 
He saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound. And the sound gave him the feeling of magic. So he's listening to the music and he feels like it's magic, right? So when you listen to music next time, you want to close your eyes. Okay. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm. CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. Okay, CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. He reached out for his Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful because you can then appreciate that. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over their soup kitchen. Have you ever seen a rainbow? Uh, I saw oh, good. the rainbows on my way. Good. Okay. So CJ, it's okay, it's okay. CJ then saw the rainbow over the soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful, found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again, and at the bus rounding the corner out of, and as the bus round the, rounding the corner out of sight, and the broken street lamps still lit up bright, and the stray cat shadows moving across the street. He started to see beautiful things, right? Okay. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. So where are they going? Home. To a soup kitchen. A soup kitchen is where you get food when you don't have food at your house. If so you, you don't have food, get food in the kitchen. Right, so the places where people don't have food to eat go. It's called a soup kitchen, okay? He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, now come on. Now what are the, what are the people doing? What are they doing here? They're getting food. They're getting food. And they're making it. So am I making it and serving it? And and they're eating it. And this is why they came to the last stop on Market Street. And they're drinking their water. They're drinking water, okay? When you're older, you can work in a, help in a soup kitchen, okay? Okay. And if you have older brothers or sisters, or maybe your parents, um, you can ask them, would you like to work in a soup kitchen? Because Every time you read a book, is it for you to just read it or are you supposed to learn something? Learn something. So today, you, I'll get you in a minute. So today you learn about looking at things and seeing what's beautiful, right? And then that people sometimes need help when they don't have food to eat, okay? Now, did you have a question? Yes. I'm three years old. Excuse me? You're three years old? Okay, great. Yes. Okay. We, it, it's okay. It's okay. Now, what we're going to do is... You can get food from the mall, but the difference is at the mall, is it free? Do you pay for it? Yes, you pay for it. At a soup kitchen, at a soup kitchen, guess what? 
you don't have to pay for it because it's for people who don't have money to, to buy food, okay? Okay. But one day you'll be big enough to help out in a soup kitchen. <laughs> okay. Ready for the next book? Yes. All right. Well, this is um, Stella Luna. And Scholastic has a lot of great books. Now, again, I never heard, read this story before, so I learned something as well. And this one, do you know what this is? Bat. A bat. What's unusual about this bat? They fly. Uh, they fly, but what's unusual about, what color do bats are usually bats? Yes. Was that your answer? Sometimes bats are black. And purple. Oh, well, I don't know about purple, but uh, bats are also sometimes brown. Are there purple bats? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say, yeah, they are. <laughs> bats change colors? Okay. And where do where do you think bats live? In caves or dark places. Sometimes they live in not here, but uh, sometimes they live in attics. Um, they live in places where it's dark because bats come out. Do bats come out during the day? No, they come out at night. When it's hot in the night. Okay, okay. They come out when it when the sun. When the sun sets. That's correct. Yes. Well, that's very good. How old are you? Five. He's what's his name? Isaac. Isaac. Isaac says bats are nocturnal. And do you all know, well, tell them what nocturnal means. All right, he says, Nocturnal means night or evening or when the sun is not present. Isn't that what he said? I, I can't hear. They sleep during the day and they come out at night. Those animals are called nocturnal. Are there other animals that are nocturnal as well? Yes? Yes. It really dark, and then I bound it, I bound to get a banana, but I put it in my mouth, but, but it bite my tongue, and it was a bat. Really? Oh my oh, that's God! That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Last question, last question, yes. Shh. Let's be quiet. Owls are nocturnal as well, okay? Because they hunt for uh, rodents usually when the rodents are running around and they can't see. But the owls have great eyesight. Oh, there's a bug in your hair. Is there a bug in my hair? Yes. It's in the back. Oh, okay. Well, it's okay. Because you know what? He's probably trying to find a good place to land, and so. But you'll watch for him, okay? <laughs> Stella Luna, okay? And it's about a bat, we believe. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, she looks beautiful. It says, in a warm and sultry forest, far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother 
that loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, Mother Bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast <laughs> as she flew out to search for food. Show me, show me. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of ripe fruit, the owl spied her. See the owl? Yeah. See the mother bat? Yeah. See Stella Luna? Yeah. Okay. Um, on silent wings, silent wings means no noisy wings, um, the powerful birds swoop down upon the bats. Okay? Dodging and shrieking, <clears throat> mother bat tried to escape. But the owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. He knocked her into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down, down she went. <coughs> faster and faster into the forest below. So again, the owl attacked the mom and the baby. The baby couldn't fly. So then she fell down into the forest. Okay. Flump. Stella Luna land head first in a soft downy nest, stalling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna quickly uh, clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Flap. I don't know, but it's hanging by its feet, chirp flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, his Pip. So the birds realized something was in their nest. They didn't know what it was. They Go didn't back. see it. I know, but they didn't know that. And so they're saying, what was that? And the, are they going to tell their mother? No, they're going to hide it from their mother, OK? Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her babies. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed into the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green grasshopper. Now remember, what kind of bat is this? A fruit bat. A fruit bat. So is a grasshopper fruit? No. no. But she was hungry, so she just closed her eyes and said, I'll eat it. Yes. Right, because they like fruit. Stella Luna learned. It's it's okay. <laughs> Stella Luna uh, learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day, and slept at night, which is not what they usually do. But she learned to stay awake at night at, during the day and slept at night. She ate bugs, even though they taste awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing, except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep hanging by her feet. See that? that? She's hanging by her feet. Um, once when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it. They wanted to see what she was doing. When Mama Bird came home, she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of her nest. Eek, she cried. Get back up here this instant. You're going to fall and break your necks. Is that what your mother would say? The birds, the birds clambered back into the nest, but Mama Bird stopped. Stella Lena, you are teaching my children to do bad things. 
I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules. In other words, don't teach my children what you do. All the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised she ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella behaved like a good bird should. But she's not a bird, is she? She's a bat. She's a bat. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked. I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly too, so I'm just like the birds. Pip, Flitter, and Flap land gracefully on a branch. Stella Luna tried to do the same thing. How embarrassing. Why is it embarrassing? Could she land on the branch? No. She had to because she's a bat. I'll fly all day, Stella Lena told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. So I'll just keep flying around. The next day, Pip Flitter, Flap, and Stellalina went fl flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we would get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stellalina had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three curious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna sighed, so she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep, hanging by her thumbs. She didn't hear the sound, soft sounds of wings coming near. Who makes soft sounds with wings? Yes. Who makes soft sounds when they fly? Um, um, yes. Owls. What did you say? Owls. Who makes soft sounds when they fly? Owls? I'm, I gave you the answer. It's owls, I think. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm wrong. Hey, a sound, a loud voice called, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down, you are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you are a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You are hanging by your thumbs, so, so that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but, but not for a bat. Okay? More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella Luna told them her story. You ate B bugs, gasped another, stuttered one. You ate at night, gasped another. How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. S sniffing Selena's fur, she whispered, you are Stella Luna. You are my baby. Is that good? Yeah. The mother found her baby? Yeah. Okay. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. 
You survived? Yes, said the mother, that as she wrapped her wings around Salalona. Come with me and I'll show you where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark or we'll crash into a tree. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as though rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. So she can see at night. That's why bats can fly. Okay. Soon the bats found a mango tree. And Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bug as long as I live, she had Stella Luna, as she stuffed herself full. I must tell Pip, Flitter, and Flap, the birds. Have you ever eaten a mango? I have. They're really good. Me too. Okay. I never ate a mango. Well, the next time you eat a mango, think of Stella Luna. Okay. <laughs> All right, the next day, are you ready? Okay. Uh, the next day, Stella Luna went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's go, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world, Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew, among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hung by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitedly. We will fly at night. <laughs> when night came, when night came, Stella Luna um, flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap Le le leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, have fl flitter. Eek, shriek, flap. They're going to crash, Gas gasped um, Stella Lina. I must rescue them. Stella Luna swooped down, uh, swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Lena hung from the limb above them. Okay. So why did she get them? Because they couldn't do what? They couldn't see at night. Okay. We're safe, said Stella Lena. Then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark too. We wish we could, could land on your feet, Flitter replied. F Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in the silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Flitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, wondered Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Selena, but we're friends. And that's a fact. So, even though he's a bat and they're birds, they decided they would always be what? A bat. Friends. Friends. Okay? They may be different in many ways, but in this way, they are all alike. So, what did you learn about bats? What do bats eat? Fruit. Well, fruit bats eat fruit. And, and they also are alike in that they all, the birds and the bats, could fly. Okay? So that's what you learned about this story, right? Okay. You have a question?
Pardon me? Okay. That's correct. So when you, when you eat your fruit, think about how the bats would also love your fruit. Other bats eat the fruit because they're hungry. Other bats eat the fruit because they're hungry. Yes, okay. Pardon me? When I was eating a book, I was eating a second ago. You did? Okay, good. You have a question? When they did hungry, they just eat food. That's correct. But there are different kinds of bats. Some bats eat fruit. Some bats eat meat, some bats eat uh, other kinds of things. Yes? Do you have a question? Yes. Okay. Stop. I want to eat hot dogs now. I let Rapper eat ice cream. What did he say? I'm sorry. He'd rather eat hot dogs. Oh, you'd rather eat hot dogs? Well, so would I. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask three people, to, to just three, and I will ask, what is, what's your favorite food? Uh, is, my, my favorite, favorite food, food is cheese. My favorite food is, is food. Is what? My, my food. What's your favorite food to eat? Uh, you want to think about it? What's your favorite food to eat? Apples, so that would be a, a bat. My, bat food is what? Well. Yes. My, my favorite, my favorite food is ice cream. I, oh, mine too. Do you have a favorite food? Um, bananas. Bananas. What's your favorite food? Um, peaches. Peaches. What's yours? Grapes. Grapes and yours. What's your favorite food to eat? Cookies. Okay, and yours. Ice cream? Yes. You want to think about it? Yes. What's your favorite food? Strawberries. Strawberries, yes. Ice cream. What's yours? SpongeBob ice cream. Okay. The Okay, and yours? My favorite, is, my favorite food is raspberries. Raspberries. Did I hear you? What's your favorite food? You're not sure? Okay, let's see. Who has I not heard from? What's your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza, okay. What about yours? What's your favorite food? Mine? Yes, what's yours? Oranges. Did I ask you a little purple, a little pink? What's your favorite food? Honeydew. What about yours? What's your favorite food? Right here. You want to think about it? What about in the back? Chicken nuggets. So my grandchildren. What about the little girl in the rainbow? Apples. What have I not heard from? The little boys in the back. Yes. Shh. shh. What's, shh. what's your favorite food? Uh, shrimp? Okay. And the little... The young per young guy, young guy. Ethan, Ethan. Ethan, what's your favorite food to eat? Fish. Fish. fish? Okay. Did I ask you? Not. Did I ask you before? Yes. Okay. Did we hear from you? Excuse me. All right. What's your favorite food? Noodles. Okay. Okay. All right. What's this? What? Donuts. 
That's what I had for breakfast. What's your favorite food? Oh, what's my favorite food? You know, that's interesting because yesterday I was convinced I should become a vegan. Um, I like, um, that's a good question. I like hamburgers. Cheeseburgers, really. Lettuce and tomato. I haven't heard from him. Bacon and rice. Bacon and rice. Okay, so again, Stella Lena is about a bat who thought she was a bird and then realized that she was a bat, but it's a good thing to also have friends with people who are different, who look different, who act different. And with, with CJ, it is a story you learn that um, it's really great to look at all the beauty in the world and not to focus on things that are not so good. And to know that uh, for people who need food, that there are people who go to soup kitchens and there are people who prepare food for soup kitchens. So both of those are really important in life. So I wish you all the best and thank you for letting me read to you. Okay? So I hope you have a really thank rest. You. Well, thank you.